Welcome to Sideshow Live! Sideshow Live! Sideshow Live! Sideshow Live! Sideshow Live! Most people clapped. I'll accept that most people clapped here. Uh, my name is Jeff May. Thank you so much for joining me. And I am being co-hosted by the fantastic, amazing, spectacular, wonderful Joshy G. Josh, how's it going? Jeff, why, thank you for what a wonderful introduction. Uh, tell me where to send a check for such a wonderful introduction. I mean, you deserve it. Oh, why, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, we have one heck of a show. I am today. excited. I can't wait. I we in preparation for this, vibrating with excitement about this. That's how excited we are for this. We have such a great show lined up today. First, Josh is going to bring us some geek headlines. This segment brought to you by Joshy G, officially the official sponsor and host of that segment, Joshy G. Uh, and then we're going to have Amy Chase who will be on here a bit later, and she's going to geek out with me over the si uh, the Sideshow She-Hulk statue coming out, which is really, really great. Uh, last week, I was joined by Sam Witwer from Star Wars, from Being Human, from uh, Supergirl, and all of the other things. The Mist. You guys remember The Mist? I love The Mist. Love The Mist. He's in that. Uh, Stop by. Uh, we hung out. We talked for a little bit. We're going to have a segment from that interview up there. Uh, then... Joshy, me and you, we're going to take a look at some excellent Star Wars pieces together. I can't wait. And then finally, we were going to have the Dungeons & Dragons art scale figures from Iron Studios. We're going to take a look at that. Uh, this is going to be a really, really fun show. So let's get started. Go now. Now. Are we not clapping? Are we not Woo! cheering? We're starting a show that's exciting. Let's... We're doing this. We're having fun. We're having some good times together. That's how this works. I like the this... dance moves. Is it this? Should That's, I just do like a, this the other is, uh, Josh is going to start us off with some of our favorite geek headlines from the past week. Josh, hit it! That's right, it's time for some geek headlines. We don't have a song, but that is my lower third. Joshy G, CrossFit Guru and host. Uh, we had a lot of fun uh, going over some of these geek headlines of the week. Let's start things off with some casting information regarding the Falcon and Winter Soldier TV series for Disney+. Plus. We already know... Falcon, Winter Soldier, already casted. We got some returns of Emily Van Camp as Miss Sharon Carter, Daniel Bruhl as the infamous Zemo, but a brand new casting that was announced this week, uh, Wyatt Russell as U.S. Agent. What? Wyatt Russell, which, fun fact, Jeff, a, is the son of Kurt and Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. I uh, bet you did not know that. Uh, also a uh, former hockey player. But you did not know that. I did oh, kind of know that. We're going to Wyatt Russell the hell out of each other on this episode of Science Show. Actually, that's all I have. Yeah. He was in Goon 2. He was, I think he was also in 22 Jump Street, which is, a, we just which is name, a guilty pleasure. Are we allowed? Can I get production? Can we just name Wyatt Russell? Yes. Can we just go over his cast? Super producer Sam telling me <laughs> that we can. Well, anyway, I'm excited for that. Nate Moore and Marvel Studios killing it again with uh, that announcement of the Winter Soldier and Falcon TV series. Uh, I know you're a big fan of the horror genre. It Chapter 2 comes out on Friday, and director Andy uh, Muschete, which I believe is how you pronounce it. Uh, you I, may have, I may have threw a little bit of emphasis on the last name. But he's also announced as directing The Flash, uh, the, uh, the DC Universe. Uh, is returning with The Flash. You're taking a horror director and putting him into a superhero genre. I personally wish Pennywise would show up and attack The Flash, but that will not happen. Are you excited to see Andy take on The Flash in the DC Cinematic Universe? I am excited anytime an announcement is made for the DC Cinematic Universe because I'm like, this is going to be interesting. And this is an excellent choice for that. I'm really excited to see that direction. I loved it. Uh, I'm not even, I'm not a huge horror guy. I loved It. I'm, I've already reserved my seats for It Chapter 2. As of, as of I uh, yeah. And so I am stoked to see that they are going to give, and this is the Ezra Miller. Yes, uh, he is flash, returning as well. Uh, very fun character, uh, a highlight from Justice League. Um, so I am stoked to see where they go with that. So that's an excellent point. Yeah, Ezra returning. So like Jeff said, we're excited to see where that movie kind of turns uh in that entire DC Cinematic Universe. Uh, one of the announcements that we kind of missed last week when we were talking about Disney Plus was the announcement of Obi-Wan. He is back 
Uh, yeah. And by Obi Wan, I mean you and McGregor, right? He has been—he's going to be busy all year long, or at least for this next upcoming year. He's got Birds of Prey. He has Doctor Sleep, a sequel to The Shining, and now he is back eight years after uh, Revenge of the Sith. A little bit older, a little bit wiser, Obi-Wan in a television series for Disney Plus. I mean, these guys, Disney Plus, they know what the audience has been craving for. They want to know what happens. What do you think has happened to Obi-Wan eight years since Revenge of the Sith? I, th I think this is one of those situations where it's almost like when we were teased an Obi-Wan movie, we were like, great. And then they're like, just kidding. It's going to be a series. It's going to be TV. It's going to be several probably hour-long episodes. And you're like, I don't know what's going to happen here. I think there's probably going to be a lot of fallout um, from some post-Clone Wars uh, fallout that's going to sort of follow it through as well as, as Revenge of the Sith. I'm really excited to see where they go with this. I feel like they did this kind of with Boba Fett. They announced like a live-action Boba Fett movie, and then they turned it kind of into The Mandalorian. Same thing with the Obi-Wan thing. They're, they, they were teasing a movie, and now you get a whole series, which I find is going to be better. I, I'm very excited yeah. for The Mandalorian, which we talked about last week, and this is another series that I think Disney Plus has just pretty much knocked it out of the park. Yeah, TV is is back to being kind of high art now. You know, it's it's really sort of we're in a post Sopranos world where television is no longer looked down upon, and it's being this amazing form of art. I'm really stoked for this. All the Disney Plus stuff is making me really excited. Yeah. And speaking of TV, there was a brand new Walking Dead promo that was just released. It's uh, season ten, believe it or not. Oof. All right, it, all of your favorites are back. You got Negan. You have Carol who looks just like a badass, as, as she as she does. Uh, Michonne, Daryl, they're all in there. And the, the tagline kind of of the, the, the promo is they, they need to silence the Whisperers. So if you don't know, they're at war with their brand new enemy, their brand new foe, the Whisperers. Uh, I have not been paying attention. I kind of left The Walking Dead when Rick left. and uh, But everyone keeps talking about how great this is. And uh, I don't know if you're a big fan of The Walking Dead. But if you are, you should be really, really pumped for this promo. They did a very, very, very good job. Yeah, I think that they're really kind of uh, extending the mythos sort of past a certain point where they're ready to go and really ready to branch out. And so now that they've kind of moved forward from the Rick storyline and they're building out on that, I think that does sort of harness a lot of what the show's about. So I'm excited to see what they do with it. Yeah, as well. Maybe, I'm, maybe I might go back. Maybe I might jump in. You never know. Go back. Uh, maybe. There's a lot. There's barely any TV shows to watch. Exactly. So I'm sure that'll there, be the what only What else could I possibly have to watch? Uh, and then last but certainly not least, we got some Trailer Madness. The Spy starring Sasha Baron Cohen. That was released this week. That's going to be on Netflix. Uh, Aeronauts with Felicity Jones and Freddie uh, Redmayne. It looks visually uh, amazing. You might want to check that out. And then a trailer that we announced last week, The Joker, has been just getting rave reviews. Uh, and at the Venice International Film Festival, it got an eight-minute standing ovation. Ooh. So I know a lot of people are pumped. Jeff, yeah. you are pumped. You're a comedian, uh, <laughs> right? I don't I, think my ending is going to be the same. Are you sure? I hope not. I, it might. That's being like, hey, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Jeff, you worked at a grocery store or one time. Or you're from Texas. <laughs> yeah, like that's... Um, no, like, I mean, the joke, I'm really excited for it. I know a lot of people are a little bit nervous about it because of what it sort of might glorify and how people might interpret it. Uh, I, for one, am very excited because I can delineate reality from fiction. So I'm stoked to see that. So. You're normal. I'm a normal person, <laughs> Super Producer Sam. Yes, I'm a normal person. Uh, make sure we don't, uh, for those of you watching at home, if you are enjoying the Joker movie, make sure you get the point of the movie. And that's, I think, an important part that we should all make sure we do with entertainment is get the point right. Exactly. Well, those are your headlines. Which one of these headlines are you excited about the most? Let us know in the chat, and we will look forward to more headlines next week. So. Oh, right. Well, Josh, guess what time it is? It's time to tell some jokes. Very close. It's time for our featured collector. Yeah! Featured collector! Uh, today's featured collector is Patrick. I'm so sorry if I screw this name up, Patrick. Patrick Gialogo, Gialogo, Gialogo. It's there. You can see it right there on the screen. Uh, uh, and we take a look at this collection and, and we see some themes. I'm seeing some themes here. He loves right. uh, we like, a lot of things. Uh, slug gangsters. Big on the list. Yeah, Shane. Batman. And you're like, I want an Olympic level athlete beating up criminals 
Bam, a lot of Batman. That Vader collection is fantastic. He has at least, just in that picture alone, and I'm sure we're missing all of the, uh, all of his collection, but there's at least 30 to 40 Vaders that at least I can see. And I think that's the Mythos Vader. And if you look at the, the corner yeah, in the right-hand right corner, corner you can see his the little orangey yeah. capeness, that looks like a Mythos uh, Vader piece. I think I see a Macquarie-looking one as well. And then we have some uh, fantastic Godzillas uh, over there on the left. Uh, what an interesting thing about this because it, it branches out. You've got your sci-fi, you've got your comic books, and then you've got your your kaiju. Uh, what do you think, Josh? What's your what's your opinion on a collection like this? Would you do you I mean, collect? That, that would be very similar to mine. What do you right? is that what you collect? Do you yeah, collect? I mean, I, I I love the superhero genre. I mean, that would be my number one. Uh, and then you go you go into your sci-fi, whether it be Star Wars, Star Trek, whatever the case may be, and then the kaiju. I'm a huge fan of Are monster you? movies, whether it be the kaiju or like Universal. Um, classic monsters. I think that that's that, that's a good encapsulation of a perfect uh, fanatic, if you want to call it that. It covers. It's a well-rounded collectible addict, and I like that. I like that. There's. I like that cute little Jabba, by the way. That pop vinyl. How adorable is that Jabba, huh? Do you just want to hug him by the neck until he dies on his like, sail barge and like, then it like explodes? Looks like my bulldog a little bit. Like, huh? It reminds me of my bulldog. A Oh, yeah. now I feel bad about saying I wanted to murder that Jabba. Well, maybe that's what she now, wants to do. Now, now I feel like a bad person. He's a gangster. He killed a lot of people. Uh, if you would like a chance to be our featured collector, which, who doesn't want that chance? I'm still waiting for my chance. Please visit side.show slash blog. You're going to do that? I'm, I'm right, I've done it every week. All right. Put me in, coach. Uh, now, I am going to, if you'll excuse me for a quick second, grab myself this Wonder Woman right here. And, of course, I took her off of the base because I am bad at this. Now, Wonder Woman is joining me on the desk today uh, because Sideshow, if you, if you sign these new newsletter subscribers to Sideshow, if you, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter yet, you can sign up. You can have a chance to win Wonder Woman. Look at that. With a little cloak. Woo. You could win this, Josh. Are you subscribed to the newsletter? I just did. As you were saying it. Entered. Can he win? Can Josh win? Oh, I'm you know being told what? no. Now they you have all what? my information. Stay on, though. Stay signed up. You're going to get a lot of really great information in that newsletter. Uh, and uh, so if you want to uh, win, if you want a chance to win this fantastic piece, and I'll put it right there, right there. Oh, yeah, I'm going to make the camera follow it if you want. This Wonder Woman right here, go to side.show slash WWDLX contest and sign up for our newsletter for a chance to win. Now we are going to take a quick video break and we'll be right back with Amy Chase and She-Hulk. Let's go. Our hands to yours. Sideshow.com.
Welcome back. Woo! Yeah, okay. Woo! Yeah, it was, that's worse than the first time, but I get it. It's <laughs> fine. Uh, I am joined uh, by my very good friend, Amy Chase. Uh, for those of you that don't know Amy, uh, she works with the marketing team. You write the blog. I you write do. The, the official Sideshow blog. And this is very important for this piece, huge she-hulk fan yes uh which is why i dragged you on here and said we're doing this i'm not doing it without amy thank you for I having me i said that <laughs> i made her do this she has work to be doing right now and instead i've dragged her in here thank you so much for coming thank you oh, I'm, so I'm, glad. I'm just so excited about this and like yeah this is one of my favorite pieces um one of the other things i do besides the blog is write product summaries and that's just me getting to gush about the characters uh in an informative and articulate way um, this might not be as articulate, but yeah, one of my absolute favorite pieces. I like how nervous you were about this <laughs> and then immediately just hit the ground running so wonderfully. <laughs> like, I'm just, I can go and you can just take care of this if you want. You are incredible. I need it. you here to keep me controlled and reined in because I will talk too much about well, this. You're She-Hulked out. You got the John Byrne uh, She-Hulk design yeah. uh, and you have the Scotty Young uh she hulk uh pin there so i think you might be a fan so i'm actually really excited that now um this statue right here is actually by sideshow uh it is uh there's an exclusive that includes an alternate portrait featuring the classic curly haired look big, hair. uh, big beautiful john byrne hair yeah cause, uh, i mean especially with a character like she hulk bigger is always better like just the the voluminous hair is is so much fun yeah she is a she is a, a, a vision of excess, I think, would be a good example <laughs> of that. Um, this is the second collectible in the Adi Granov Artist Series, which I'm really excited about. Uh, a fantastic artist and yes. a great dude. Uh, now, let's take a look. I love. There's some parts to this that I absolutely love. Yeah. And one of the things I want to talk about here is the fact that she's knocking over this fire hydrant. That the water coming out, it's clear, mm -hmm. which is such a fascinating thing. As part of a as part of a piece here, like you can see, there's there's like a clear you can see through it. You see my finger there? Yeah. Yeah. That's and then the good. the ripples going down on the base, and I mean even the the front end here. Let's see if we can. Some of the the ground is stained by the the water. I mean there's 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 a whole story going yeah. on in this piece, and we're just seeing the freeze frame last moment of that story. And we also get a nice little cameo here. From Pizza Rat, him or herself, the right there. Internet sensation. Internet sensation, Pizza Rat. Do, uh, is that is that copywritten? No, we got it's fair use. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, we got Pizza Rat there hanging out. Uh, look at that. We got the really '80s shoes that we got going on there, which I think is fantastic. And one of my favorite details is actually the. Uh, let's see if I can. It's kind of hard to see because her legs are there, but the taxi door has her own, her very own advertisement for her law firm on it. There's a Jennifer Walters ad on the side. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's see kind her. of a fun callback for the whole series that she was a part of. I know um, Adi didn't do the cover where she's sitting on the, the bus bench, but it is kind of a nice callback to the like slip and fall. I'm the one to call. Yeah, I think that's the. Mike Mayhew or uh, Greg, Greg Horn. Horn, one of yeah. those, yeah, I, fantastic. But three amazing artists, by the way. One of the things that I love, especially about her comics, is um, the murderer's row of artists who get to do uh, She-Hulk pinup covers. I was going to call her Shulky, like we're on our first name basis. Um, the the murderer's you can do that. row. Of... She's fictional. You can get away with it. <laughs> the the variant artists, and I mean, there's Adi Granov, there's Kevin Wada, uh, Mike Mayhew, Greg Horn, all the people who get to take on the Jade Giantess, and it's it's always just so much fun and. I'm gonna drop all the nicknames. I like her, it. But... I like that you're throwing that. I uh, so I mean, very excited. We just announced recently, we're gonna get some <sighs> She-Hulk. Who's yeah. your dream casting? I think she was already in a Marvel show, but since Mahershala Ali can be Blade, that's thrown out the window. Um, Amy Acker. I would really like yeah. Amy Acker because I think she can do that fun, the lawyer side, and then however they choose to do the She-Hulk side. I think she was the the cellist in. Agents of Shield or something. She was like Coulson's like oh. kind of she whatever. No one remembers. Um, I would like Amy Acker to play She Hulk. I saw uh, my friend uh, Mike Choi, artist Mike Choi, mm -hmm. said uh, Anna Kendrick, oh, and okay. I have not been able to stop thinking about that. <laughs> like I just I can't stop thinking about that casting and how perfect it would be. And then I saw some people who'd be like, it needs to be somebody taller. I'm like, that's not how any of this works. That's not. <laughs> Mark they, Ruffalo, he's seven, seven and a half feet tall. They right? put him on a strict training yes. regimen between uh, Infinity War and Endgame. Um, taking a look at this sculpt, 
I mean, you really, it's, it's, this is a gorgeous piece. The colors are, are unbelievable. The design is really strong. They got some incredible, haha, <laughs> really strong. Uh, they got some really incredible details with, um, like, really capturing the Adi Grano style. Um, the first collectible in the series was the Iron Man Extremist, and they really did a great job of kind of, I don't know what material Granov works with, but you, he kind of has that matte texture. I, I always think, like, oh, it kind of looks like colored pencils, but I'm sure that's not what it is. Um, but in the paint for her, they got some really great uh, detail. I don't know how close we can see, but there is like stippling texture on her green skin, kind of pebbled. You have that that texture that is present in the Adi Granov art style. And then of course her own super suit has, um, has like the glossy purple versus the more yeah. uh, plain white. But they, they did a really great job in the, the paint textures and it's all sculpt. So that's how they get those additional details. And I think mm -hmm. that's where you get the Adi Granov style. One of the great bits about She-Hulk is that she was always sort of breaking the fourth wall, sort of a a pre-Deadpool. Be she knew Deadpool she was, was in a comic, yeah. A character. Like she she acted like she was in a comic, and so her comics have always been very funny. It's mm -hmm. always been a very funny sort of existence for her. And this statue, I think, really encapsulates that. She it's a very funny statue. It's obviously very. It conveys the the power and the sexiness of the character, but it yeah. also conveys the sense of humor that you might not be able to get with an Iron Man piece. Yeah, because she's doing like collateral that. damage that she may or may not have to clean yeah. up at the law firm later. Yeah, while holding her own <laughs> a taxi door with her own advertisement on it, while Pizza Rat is right next to her. Like, yeah. it encapsulates, I think, all of that, so I'm really excited. Yeah. Um, now, this uh, really fun piece is available for pre-order now at side.show slash green with anger. <laughs> Amy, thank you so much for thank that. You. Everyone, don't forget to check out the Sideshow blog uh, and read every single product description because they were painstakingly done <laughs> by the very talented and very knowledgeable Amy Chase. Uh, so yeah. thanks again, Amy, for coming by. Thank you for having me. Uh, no, up next, we've got a quick video break, and then we'll be right back with a clip of my interview with Sam Whitworth last week. It's going to basically look exactly like this with a different shirt. <laughs> so I'm really excited. Don't get too confused, uh, but we'll be right back. Thank you so much. Hey, guys. This is an advanced look open boxing of the Bane 10th scale art scale statue. Uh, this is a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. So uh, this is a polystone statue based on the concept art by Ivan Reese. Super cool. And this is the first time that anyone is going to see this character unboxed. So let's get to it. Uh, as you can see, we've got Bane. This is kind of like a comic book Bane. He's coming right out of the comic book, which is really cool. Uh, he's also holding a Batman cape, which is super exciting as well. Uh, a little taste of a big battle that just happened. And so he's uh, basically holding his prize. On the back, we've got another picture of the character, which is really cool. Get that there. And then on this side, what do we have on this side? We've got just another picture of his hand. So that's the box. All right, well, now that we've got the box down, as you can see, let's jump right in and start unboxing him. Got the lovely styrofoam here. Wow, I love how they fit everything in here so perfectly so that it doesn't get damaged. That is really cool. First, we've got the base, so let's take that out. Okay, look at this base. This is awesome. Looks like we've got some sheet metal and kind of like a rock formation. A stalagmite? Something like that. We've got the, the body here wrapped so perfectly. Put that over here. Wow, look at this guy. The detail is exquisite. His muscles look huge. I feel like he could just wreck me so easily. <laughs> That is fantastic. Okay, now I need to figure out how to put him on here. Let's do that, just because his foot is like that. I'll get him situated and we'll flip him around. There, there we go, just like that. Oh, look at that. That is awesome. Okay, we've also got some accessories here, it looks like. Oh, this is really cool. This is right out of the, right from the box. We've got uh, his hand, which you can attach here if you want to. We'll do both those, but this is him actually holding Batman's cape. So he just had a nice run in and he's holding his prize, which is pretty cool. I'll put that one on so you guys can see. Oh, it looks epic. That's awesome. I'm gonna switch it out. We've also got, I'll put that right there. We've also got another, looks like hand right here. So this is his normal hand if you don't want him to have that at the time. 
Oh, wow. That just looks epic. I love his, I don't know what you would even call that, but it's almost like the fluid is coming out and just running down through his hand, almost giving him like extra power, which is super cool. So let's just spin him around so you guys can get a full view. Looks really awesome, all jacked out, ready to take on Batman and the rest of the DC League. Again, guys, this is the 10th scale art scale Bane. Uh, don't forget to get yours. Also, we'll see you at Comic-Con in San Diego. And don't forget to let your geek side show. I want to talk about this guy on his little cycle. Speaking of movies. Uh, oops. Uh, whoops. Whoops. Uh, talk about a, a, a turnaround here. Uh, Darth Maul. I want to talk about his vision because Darth Maul was, at one point in time, a one-off character that infuriated fans because... He, he died in episode one. Fast forward to the Clone Wars. Dave Filoni and you are working together now, along with, with staff writers, like, to bring this character back. Well, we were working under George well, to do that. George, he, as well. George had a very specific idea of what it needed to be, and so no pressure. <laughs> Oh God, I, I'm I'm remembering now how how stressful it was. Um, was it fun? Well, it was so being stressful. much fun, but you're, it's the kind of fun where you're like, this is the kind of fun that could get me into a lot of trouble with a lot of fans, you know? Because, I mean, yeah, because Star Wars fans are not shy when they don't like something. And I no, no, like, they're they're all they're known for their patience and <laughs> understanding. <laughs> That's right. The Star Wars fans. There are plenty, look, most of the Star Wars fans, as evidenced by the most recent Star Wars celebration, are wonderful, patient, kind people. Then there's the, the ones that are vocal and maybe are... They're addicted to you, don't you know, that they're toxic. Yeah. Well, they, 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 and they Some were, are. They didn't, they didn't really show up to Star Wars Celebration. Star Wars Celebration was full of support and people cheering on Ahmed Best as Jar Jar walking on the stage and stuff like that. They were that. so mean to him. Uh-huh. Everyone was so mean to that poor guy. But what was so cool is that at Star Wars Celebration, now it's 20 years later, and those kids have grown up, and to them, they're like, oh my God, it's Jar Jar. Yeah. So, and these are 25, 30-year-olds who are like, oh my God, it's Ahmed Best, cool. So they're, they're, the heart of Star Wars fandom is quite healthy and sweet and generous. Um, but having said that, anyway, back to the, the, the question. So, like, take Boba Fett, right? Like, <clears throat> he, uh, for a long time, we didn't really know anything about him. And Except he uh, died like a Looney Tunes character. Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. That's what we know. We're like, oh, he looks what cool. The... Oh, well, oh, yeah, well he did. He, oh, he's terrible at this it's amazing. It's amazing how we can go from looking like such a badass so, to then dying like a cartoon. Right, right. And you're like, huh. Burp, burp. Um, Thanks, Tales from Jabba's Palace. But for... it's interesting because for, for George Lucas and company, it wasn't quite obvious that Boba Fett was Boba Fett because that was just a character to them. You know, like, take, take Darth Vader. He was, uh, there are... You know, apparently, in early versions of Star Wars, he said he was supposed to die. It's like a, it's a, it's a Saturday morning, Saturday matinee, you know, serial yeah. from back in the day, like Flash Gordon conquers the universe from the '30s, and like, you know, there may be a recurring villain, but then you have your villain of the week, and a lot of them get killed. Yeah. So it wasn't until he saw this is working, maybe we should have him have Vader spin off, and yeah. and wait a second, I have all these old drafts where there are these notions of characters turning and. And, you know, and this father and son and Bob, oh, I know who Darth Vader is. I get it. You know? So, so but when it comes to Maul, right, yeah. the mystery of that character and the fact that he didn't say anything, in fact, was in many ways what made him cool. Just the presence of Ray Park. The presence of Ray Park made him yeah. really interesting and cool. So in a way, when you go, oh, well, now we're going to give him a, a personality and he's going to never stop talking, you can only almost lose you know, like you can only almost destroy what's been created by doing that. And there's maybe a slight chance, slight chance that you can win, that you could, that you could, that you can pull it off, that you could go through. Cause you're like, what if the audience doesn't like the sound of the voice? What if the audience doesn't like the cadence? What if the audience doesn't like what's being said? Uh, the psychology of the character, all of these things. So we were very methodical about how we laid out every step of Maul's journey. 
and what personality traits you'd see when. I, I do want to discuss scary. that too because what <clears throat> we had from voice before was at last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi, at last we will have revenge. It was very calm. Yeah. It was very very chill yeah. the way he delivered that line. Right. And now you have somebody whose rage keeps them alive. Yeah. Uh, living essentially through the force mm -hmm. um, is crazy, is really lose has lost it and is right. being brought back and so and and then kind of seethes through rage. Yes. And uh, what was it like getting into that? Like, how do you get into that that headcanon, that headspace? <laughs> how do you do that? Because that's an intense character to have. Yeah. Well, I George laid out this whole thing that he was cast aside and on this garbage planet. And he sort of made the garbage planet a little bit like hell. Like you had to go down into hell to pluck Maul out of hell. Because in a very real way, he died, right? In some ways, in yes. many ways. Yeah, he was chopped in half. It <clears throat> it's usually puts, puts one... It's a damper on, the, on your living experience. Yeah, it yeah. really does. And certainly changes the way that you dance. But basically, he... Um, the idea was, and the trick was, and me and Dave Filoni talked about this, it's like, okay, on one hand, the audience is going to want that... They're going to want that. On the other hand, that doesn't make any damn sense. If if there's going to be, it's going to be such a jip in Phantom Menace for Obi-Wan to win that battle after all that stuff, and then just have him come back later and say, it's me again, I'm back. You know, like, that doesn't make any sense. It's a terrible story. There's got to be a great cost involved in him being struck down, stricken down the way he was. So... The idea was he's 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 a shell of a, he, he's in pieces he's literally in pieces his mind is fractured, and we have to show the hell that he's been going through the whole year and what we talked about what we were hoping we were going to get across, which I probably shouldn't say this here but I, I I don't know I'll say it. Darth Vader probably has some bad days. Few. I mean, right. Few. We yeah. see in Rogue One, he's like, they no, have to wash a, him in the... He's a limbless burn victim. Yeah, right. yeah you're not going to have to have wash him of... in the back to the tank, and and he lives in this really awful place that's just like down the street from where, you know, he yeah, lost he, his wife, yeah. he lost his legs. and So he doesn't, he's probably has some bad days, but the Vader that we know, <clears throat> the Vader that we know only yells really like once in the entire time that we know him in the movies. And that's after, you know... It's after he pulls the rebels over and goes, where's the Death Star plans? Yeah. Like, what? We're a constantly... Yeah. I just saw you guys fly off after Rogue One. Uh, come out and tear the ship apart until you found those plans. Bring me the passengers. I want them alive. But other than that, yeah. he's kind of dead inside, right? Yeah, he's very he's very playing his hand he's close very, to the chest here. He's kind of that, in yeah. control, yeah. right? He's a very controlled character, but, but clearly we know that he's pretty angry. So you imagine in his private moments, or, or for example, his moments behind that mask, his private moments inside the mask, his thoughts, yeah, may be tormented. So this was an opportunity to show, hey, hey, kids, you know how you like everyone likes to cosplay like the dark side? Well, it ain't fun. Yeah, it's it, torment. It's it, it's torture. And now that Maul, his mind is fractured, he can't have Vader's control. He can't have the Sith control over his own rage. It's completely taken over. And this is the torment, the raw torment of the dark side of the Force. And it's what's keeping him alive. That uh, jealousy, that, that <clears throat> need to accumulate things has now stretched out into this weird, uh, you know, like he is now just gathering garbage around him. You know, he can't gather power, money, resources. He, all he can do is gather garbage, and that garbage is now starting to sit to him. And as the years wear on, that garbage is now growing out, and it grows into these limbs, this, these these garbage limbs animated by the dark side of the force that get him around on local money. I, I want to <clears throat> sort of take a shift now to my favorite surprise uh, was seeing Darth Maul in Solo. Right. At the end, I yelled uh, your name, which people did not understand. Uh, <laughs> I was like, Sam! And everyone's like, "That what? There's, is there a Sam here? And I was like, never mind. It's fine. Um, what a curveball to have that leap. Because even though Clone Wars is canon, a lot of people don't expect their movies to have... Something from animated. Yeah. And, and not only that, yeah. but something from a movie 20 years ago. Yeah show back up like Darth Maul. What was it like sort of getting the call for Solo and, and being told that this is it, this is... I'll tell you what I respected about it was was the acknowledgement that there's... 
really, and, and again, it's all part of the same continuity in one way. But in another way, there's a very personal Star Wars that one guy made, George Lucas. And he made six movies and he made a TV show called The Clone Wars. And he was there week to week guiding and you know, creating the stories for The Clone Wars and, and working on them. So I loved the acknowledgement that they're like, well, if George did Clone Wars, we have to deal with that. Yeah. It's, it's part of the story. You know, he regards us as part of the story, so we must go with that. <clears throat> but the other part was, the younger Kasdan told me, uh, he said, well, it, it, this was a nice way of not just doing fan service, but shading out everything that we are hinting at in this movie. Because we only have this movie to tell the story. We can't go into depth about what Crimson Dawn is, or what Kira, what bad things Kira maybe has done. Mm -hmm. So this was a great way of shading it in, using the work that you had done in Clone Wars. If you've watched Clone Wars, oh, you know pretty much exactly what Crimson Dawn is. You know pretty much exactly what Kira's, uh, what Kira's been required to do. So it was a way of, you know, we could be really nonspecific and say, it's this thing, it's over there, we just made it up. They're like, no, we'll use something that we already have. It's, it does so. a great job. One of the cool things about that is that Solo does a good job of allowing the audience to fill in its own blanks and yeah. to use context clues, right. but also to have stuff previously to build on and to incorporate. It does it masterfully so. Right. I, I'm, I'm like mad that people don't like Solo more. Because I actually, it's, it's to my, in my opinion, Solo's the most fun Star Wars movie. It's, I wouldn't say it's the greatest, but it is right. a, far and away Very the funny. most fun Star Wars movie Best to pace, watch. Funny and fun, yeah. uh, and that was and that was the whole thing with, with Solo is the ambition only it only ever needed to be a very fun yeah. adventure, and the mall stuff. And if you've seen the Clone War stuff, that that's where the bottom lies yeah. in that because you realize Han Solo could have been con converted into someone that worked on this guy's terms. You know yeah. that would have been bad. Uh, Welcome back. Okay, he's getting, every time I get less and less fanfare, and I'm going to be honest, I expect more from you guys. Yay, Jeff. Yay! Yeah, okay, well. Jeff, 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 Thank Jeff, you. Jeff, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> uh, don't forget to use side.show slash Sam Whitwer to see that full interview, and don't forget to head to his site and pick up Revenge of the Crash Tones and uh, Dungeons and Dragons Art and Arcana, uh, both fantastic things that I own. Like that. Uh, now, Joshy G and I, we have Star Wars all over the desk Look here. This. And we are pumped. I can't wait. I am Neither excited. can Luke. I think, I, well, he's going to have to. He's going to have to. Because he's wearing binders. Somebody got in trouble with Dad. Yeah, his dad is real upset with him. Uh, this is a fantastic, we have the six scale by Sideshow based on Star Wars Episode Six: Return of the Jedi. I don't know if you've heard of that. Small little art house film. Uh, it includes his force gesture hands and his blaster holding hands, as well as a blaster and lightsaber. Uh, you can get it, obviously, at side.show slash deluxe Luke, which shows up. It will eventually show up, right? There it is, right? There it is. Right there, right there. Right, right here. You see it? Yeah, there it there is. There you go. I'm, I'm never going to get the hang of this part of it. How about um, yeah. And we have him, uh, obviously, this is in the, the prisoner Luke scene where he is, uh, he is volunteered on Endor to give himself up to try and convince his father that you don't have to be a bad dude, Dad. I know who you really are, Pops. Yeah. And it's funny, too, because one of the things we're not allowed to do is uh, put words into their mouths yeah. or do impressions of them while we do this, and uh, it is very difficult. It is very difficult. It's, it's very especially hard. Especially when you have such iconic characters like the Emperor. Like, like the, every... Yeah. Ounce of my being is like, don't, don't do it. To do that don't classic, that voice, a hook yep. laugh that he does. We can't, especially do that. in this pose too. This is a great piece. I want to talk about this because this is the six scale by Hot Toys. Again, uh, we uh, we have uh, a movie masterpiece series based on uh, Return of the Jedi. Uh, obviously, we know that um, it comes with its own Luke's lightsaber. Just he comes with his own little Luke's mm -hmm. lightsaber right there, so he could say, "Were he." alive and talking which he's not he would be able to say you want you would like this lightsaber wouldn't you i just love his facial expression sitting in yeah. that chair yeah he's just like i know i run the galaxy that or he's very excited that football starts on thursday either way yeah he is pumped he could be i mean imagine that if like they had this whole galaxy running thing but they also still watched like american football <laughs> 
<laughs> just watching. I'm a big Browns fan. Yeah, yeah. It's just like all yeah. angry that the Browns blows up the planet Cleveland if the Browns don't do well. Um, uh, so he comes with uh, Luke's lightsaber hilt, a Jedi's weapon, yep. if you will. Uh, he also includes force lightning hands with purple sort of lightning effects that come out. So Which you we, can we have were him... practicing. What's a yeah. good lightning noise? Zzz. Is that Almost one? there. Almost there. Bring. That's more like thunder. Okay, I'll stop. Just a Wait, bike, a bike horn. I, yeah, I like that we're doing the gesture, and the the camera guy's like, "No, it's on the it's on the figure." But I, yes, they they come with those uh, accessories, and then two, the chair lights up. I'm a big fan of that. The chair lights up. Are you kidding me? You like, know, you have access to the. Uh, I will go ahead and just pull out the old emperor here for a moment, and just kind of see. It lights up at the top, kind of casting a, a, a fun little light, and then right there on the on the the arms of the chair. So those light up. I mean, obviously, we've got strong lights here, which will sort of <laughs> make that seem slightly moot, but it does look absolutely fantastic. Uh, and this emperor is posable as well, by the way. I know in the sideshow main offices, uh, I have seen him kind of lounging with his leg on the knee, just chilling. Yeah, he's doing that classic, doing yeah, that. classic uh, chilling sort of a situation that he's got going on. Uh, another fantastic figure. And then uh, to his left, yep. uh, his left, you're right, uh, we have the Sixth Scale, uh, sixth scale Vader uh, by Hot Toys, part of the movie Masterpieces series based on episode five. Which is? Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, okay. uh, we had a couple of returns and Empire Strikes Back here. Um, he has a detachable outer helmet. I'm going to do something. Uh, uh, no, folks, I didn't break it. Uh, this is actually uh, by design. You can uh, you can take that helmet off, and you can see That's... his beautiful head right there. Look at that! Look at that scarring. How did he get that? Uh, well, uh, his best friend and mentor kicked him it into a lava pit. It wasn't shaving. No, there was no sometimes shaving. Sometimes when I'm shaving my head, I nick it. And I'm like, oh boy, my head's gonna look like Darth Vader's, but I guess not. No, it's not. You're not in danger. I mean, you've got a. Do you, do you have a good razor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then you should be fine. Okay. They make good razors enough. Um, I like that. how he's so proud of his belt buckle. So. He is stoked. This is a well, you showing know what? it off to the galaxy. It's a late seventies, early eighties belt buckle. That was the golden age of belts. I mean, when you think about all the the sort of Tom Selleck and Burt Reynoldsy belts going wrong back then, this is a class. He's he's like check it, check out what I got going on here. Yeah. Check out this new belt. I mean, I know he has other hands that you know can hold the lightsaber and all he that good stuff. Does right? he has several? interchangeable hands, including the lightsaber holding hands, mm -hmm. the pair of hands that are holding the belt boxes that we see here, Got as it. well as a force using right hand. Because remember when he's beating his child and throwing an entire uh, building's worth of crap at him? Yep. You could you could pretend that that happened. Um, we have a, an LED light up chest panel and belt boxes, uh, as well as a Cloud City themed diorama base with lights that flash. I don't know if you can tell that they're flashing. They're flashing. You can tell Maybe my, I was going to say my pasty-ass arm uh, in the way. We don't need that. So you can, it looks much better. Now look, you can barely you tell. Can barely see it. Uh, and uh, there, uh, there. Uh, oh, 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 look at that. It's visible and then gone. Uh, all, you see, I, I like the little, the, the, the piping that he sliced through. That's a great little, uh, a great little scene. When they cut kind of right through it. Yeah. Um, and we have uh, the uh, there's obviously we have a light up a uh, red lightsaber that is included along with a hilt and a blade in motion, which I love yeah. that they do. Huge fan of Hot Toys blades in motion. The, and yeah, they had one where uh, I think on the Sam Witwer piece, uh, the the Darth Maul, his the, yeah, the double the double oh, uh, lightsaber in, in motion is awesome, and and that one is, is great too. Uh, and that is available at side dot show slash Empire Vader which is pretty fantastic. And we're going to now uh, make a shift uh, all the way over here. Uh, there he is. Right here, look at look at him. Is he gonna, is he gonna hit him? Oh, look at, is he gonna, uh, oh, finally, uh, get that revenge. Oh, get that revenge. Oh, oh. no, that's not how the movies end. Uh, we have the uh, Obi-Wan Premium format figure by Sideshow. This thing is stunning. Uh, we inspired, obviously, by Episode Four, A New Hope. This has a custom-tailored fabric costume, which shows the details of aging and wear that you would experience after many 
gears on Tatooine, uh, and the cape is wired for dynamic posing. You could, if you wanted to shape it in a different way to make it look really exciting. Like he's standing in the, in the wind? In the harsh winds of the Junlin Wastes. They, yes. They really do think of everything. They, uh, Sideshow covers a lot of yeah. ground. They, they, they do make sure that that's uh, how that's going to work. Uh, it includes two different right arms, one reaching for the saber and one that actually wields the saber. Which is what we got here, right? Here. Uh, and this also includes, and this is uh, one of my favorite things, uh, this version right here, and I'm going to pick it up here, it has Pondababa's severed arm from the cantina scene. Where he pulls out a blaster and woo her, goes, no blasters. And so Obi-Wan's like, agreed. And then slices off Ponda Baba's arm. And there it is. That I poor... hope that he like keeps it and puts it in like a collection of severed arms. Like puts, just puts yeah. it like. And there it is. Just right at a little trophy in his yeah. little creepy hut. Imagine if you're Luke Skywalker and you go into that hut and it's just arms. Disney Plus, it's like, your uh, chance <laughs> to make our dreams come true uh, in, that, in that TV series. We, we have a Ewan McGregor. Yeah. He could be just collecting arms. We don't know. We don't, we don't know. know what's happening. Uh, if you uh, want to take a look, uh, a closer look at that, if you want to read um, the excellent description by former guest Amy Chase, uh, go to uh, side.show slash Obi-Wan PF. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. That costume look at is that. just great. It, the costume the is The tailored costume on that figure is awesome. The Alec Guinness likeness, the sculpt of that is just so good. I love it. Now, uh, I don't want anybody to go anywhere. They better not. Don't go anywhere. They better not. Because uh, we're going to be right back with those art scale D&D &D statues that I teased earlier. I'm really excited. We're going to get to take a look out of those. Uh, we're going to do a quick video break, and we'll be right back with those pieces. So don't go anywhere. Don't you dare. Don't you dare leave. You stay right there. You keep watching, and we'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Can I do the voice during the break? Absolutely. Okay. We'll do all the voices okay, we'll during the, the, voice the break. break. Okay, I'm excited. Bye. Welcome back, everyone. Woo! Okay. All right. That's enough. Welcome back. I'm, uh, I'm very, very, very excited. The, uh, the Dungeon Master from Dungeons & Dragons has started a campaign. 
And guess where it is, Josh? Right here. Sideshow Live. Right here, Sideshow Live. Our hidden layer. Located on this specific desk. Yes. I'm very, very, very excited to be able to talk about these uh, pieces. And, and uh, so what we have here, we have uh, an entire, uh, this is all the art scale uh, 1 to 10 statue by Iron Studios. So all three of these pieces are the 1 10th scale statues by Iron Studios. I love them so much. I'm so excited about these pieces. They are part of the Dungeons and Draggled, Dragons. Draggles? Draggles? Draggles down in Draggle Rock. Yeah. Uh, the Dungeons and Dragons uh, Battle Diorama series based off the very popular Dungeons and Dragons animated series from the 1980s that... I was not allowed to watch That's, as a kid. Yeah, you did, you did mention that. My mom told me I couldn't. She got caught up. Did you end up watching them anyway? No. Oh, but I love the design. I know I need to, Well, I was like four. And my mom was like, no, you can't watch that. Watch He-Man. He's wearing underwear and beating up a skeleton oh, man. Like, I feel like that was all very similar. <laughs> um, but I really love these pieces. I adore them. Uh, I actually, as an adult chase down that series and finally got to watch it. Ah, so I'm good. really, really excited. Uh, what I want to look at first, we have uh, these the Dungeon Master here. Uh, uh, so you take a look at them, one-tenth scale. Uh, they, these are all limited edition. They have a very detailed hand-painted base. And there's something very fascinating about these. These are what we like to refer to as proximity bases, meaning that they all have a very similar style in the base. So if you were to want, like you can take a look, if you're looking at the screen here, all of these are sort of the same color pattern, the same scheme, and they can kind of fit together in the same diorama if you want to um, produce like kind of a really high yeah. end um, sort of delivery system for these. Uh, how cool are they looking, right? I mean, it looks like they just kind of jumped off of that, the, the TV screen, if you want yeah. to say it like that. Yeah, did you watch the show? I, I remember it vaguely. Yeah. I was more of the He Man guy, but yeah, I do same. remember the TV show. Yeah, I always, I loved, the 80s were a very, very fun time for cartoons because they were like, how can we make toy commercials 22 minutes long? Yeah, and, and they did a great job. Away. So what we have here now is we have Eric the Cavalier. Again, an art scale, one-tenth statue by Iron Studios, part of the Dungeons & Dragons Battle Diorama series from the Dungeons & Dragons animated series that we all love so very much. Uh, this is a limited edition, detailed hand-painted base, and here's one of my favorite things. Why don't you go ahead and grab that treasure chest real quick. Boop. You can take that treasure chest off, and you can put it with any of the other people. You can put it on, Wait, now the Dungeon now the Master. Dungeon. Dungeon Master, what are you doing with that treasure chest? He's You're not looking it. for treasure. Oh, wait, hold on. Or? Or we could move it over to Sheila the Thief. Sheila. She doesn't have to look far. It's right she at her feet. Have, she doesn't have to look for She doesn't have to steal it. You gave it to her yeah. just now. Uh, the Sheila the Thief is an art scale 110 statue by Iron Studios, part of the Dungeons and now, Dragons. Do these pieces as well? Yeah. That turtle shell shield, that spear. We could put that spear wherever we want. We could Eric the Cavalier can have two shields, a spear, that would rhyme. Good job. We could make that happen. So now he's got several shields, several weapons. He's got a spear. There's a sword and a stone right behind him there. He is getting greedy with the offense and defense over there. Um, the shield of the thief uh, that we want to take a look at right there, limited edition, detailed, hand painted base. Again, that proximity base that looks like it'll fit in with just about everything there. Now, all these pieces are shipping now, and you can find them at side.show slash collect D&D, along with several orders that are up for pre-order. I'm gonna put this out there, I'm gonna float this along to you. If you are interested in these specific pieces, I jump on them as soon as possible. Yeah, they're gonna be Because I know they're going super fast, and I know some people are starting to wait for the entire collection to come out. Don't wait for all of them to be released before you start ordering. Ordering these ones now. Ordering these ones. That's that's a you sentence. Got it. That I, I, I think they get it. Me do English, okay? Um, <laughs> push them all together. Push them oh, all. Oh, okay. okay. Finally. Okay, fine. Here we go. So we... Oh, look at that. We're like a little happy family here. And you see how that detailed proximity base really kind of works together. Yeah, we you did actually that? a really good job on that. Yeah. Uh, can I say something right now? We're great. Yeah. We did such a great job. Uh, anyway, you can find these at side.show, collect 
slash collect d and uh, I would jump on these ones real quick if you're interested in them at all. Uh, they're great. They're one-tenth scale, so the price point is really, really uh, fantastic for that. And we got a large collection coming out relatively soon. Yeah. Some people are waiting. Uh, don't wait. Jump no. on it now. Now, we will be right back with a very fun announcement about what both we're do. We're going to be after this. I hope they're fans because we're here. We're doing some pretty yeah. cool stuff after this, so I'm really, really excited about that. So uh, we got a quick video break and come back, and we are going to tell you our plans for the rest of the day, which are really exciting. Welcome back. Woo! Thank you. Yeah! 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 Woo! Finally, victory. Uh, few. So bad with the sound right oh, now. but he Are loves we, it. Everybody loves the sound. Does he get mad? I think our sounds are great. What do you guys think? Sound off in the chat if you yeah. think our sounds are great. We haven't even it, done any good sounds yet. We've done great sounds. Yes. You know what, Josh? You've done great sounds. Why, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I don't even know if now, I'm so... Uh, I'm now just, me, now me. No, but I was like, we can't do all these impressions and now I want to do them. Like, I'm just, oh yeah, yeah, you do great sounds too. Okay. But anyway, about me, I really wish I could do, anyway, sorry. Uh, it's been a really great show. It I've had been. a blast doing this and there is a lot more to come actually uh, because, Josh, what do you have going on today? You got something at 115, right? Yeah, well, before I go to Irwan and grab some food, I'm going to be in our exclusive, uh, our exclusive uh, Facebook group, Let Your Geek Side Show. Little uh, little chat cave. We can't wait to check out this Boba Fett Hot Toys uh, deluxe six scale figure. We're gonna be uh, opening them up, checking out all those fun accessories. It's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure that you're a part of that group. Uh, it's a Facebook group. Let your geek side show. I know I'm a part of it, and I can't wait to show you guys what we have in store for you today. That's gonna be uh, great, real fun. Half an hour of you playing. Uh, that sounds like fun. I'm jealous of that. Hey, and, come uh, on in. Well. If you can find the location of the collector's cave. It's the chat cave. cave. I don't know. No, I'm collect... calling it the cave of... It's the yeah. cave of wonders. Does that, do we have the copyright no, to that's say a that Disney. I was going to no? say it, but... Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, at 2 o'clock, so right after that, you get a 15-minute break after watching uh, Joshi and, and Boba Fett on the, uh, on the Facebook group, Let Your Geek Side Show. Check it out. I'm a member. You can stalk me if you need it. Uh, at 2 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time, you'll get the second episode of our brand new six-scale show, Unsealed and Revealed. Woo! Now, that is going to be a fully interactive show where you can ask questions and get a closer look at a figure that is brand spanking new. Can you believe it? I can't wait. And why would you? Uh... Guy Clender, local six scale expert, is going to be looking. I'm very excited about this. I'm stoked on it at the Stan Lee Hot Toys Guardians of the Galaxy oh, 2 that figure. So great. Uh, I'm so stoked to be able to see that. You guys know it's the sort of the astronaut outfit that he has. Um, it is a great show with, and I'm just going to put this out there 
an amazing host. Um, He's cool. He's so a cool don't. Guy. <laughs> He's all right. I'm just. Why? What does that mean? Nothing. Sammy, super Nothing. producer Sam. Don't call me Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. You know, I got it. got honest. awkward in here. Very I was quick. not <laughs> expecting for that level of backlash he, on air. He almost jumped uh, on. Onto the desk. We're professionals here at Sideshow Live. Are we though? Um, don't forget, so check out <laughs> check out Joshy G at the Chat Cave. Let your Geek Side Show on Facebook, 115 to 145, looking at the Boba Fett Deluxe Scale Can't wait. Uh, by Hot Toys. I'm stoked for that. And then you can check me out uh, at 2 o'clock. Uh, thank you to my very fantastic guest host, Joshy G. Thank you so much. Thank you very and much, buddy. And our very special guests, Amy Chase and Sam Whitmer. Yeah! Yeah! Amy, Amy, Sam, Sam. That's, that's a great chant. I'm trying to help. I'm going to start doing that in sports stadiums. Helping them out. It's an Amy and Sam chant. Uh, don't forget to head to slash. Do you know how hard it is to say this stuff out loud? It is nearly impossible. Sideshow. Side.show slash WWDLX contest. There it is. After I have to stumble on it, it shows up. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I get yep. it. Oh, there we go. I get it. Uh, for your chance to win this beautiful deluxe Wonder Woman. Uh, and also, our Designer Con giveaway is still going on. Yes. Head to side.show slash decon giveaway uh, for a chance to win a pair of VIP Designer Con passes, as well as a gold Thanos San Diego Comic Con exclusive by Unruly Studios. Uh, you, you have been an unbelievably fantastic audience. Thank you so much for welcoming us into your homes and into those eyeballs. We appreciate everything. Don't forget to let your geek sideshow. See you later.